What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and when I take a look at my analytics for this channel, uh, it seems that most of my audience comes from India. So I thought I might do something just for you guys for this tutorial, but I guess it's going to be interesting for everyone else to see. And that is how to model the ancient Indian step well in Revit. So these are these amazing structures, uh, ancient structures, uh, made out of like stairs and like a well of stairs. I don't know how to explain it, but it looks really amazing. And I thought, why not recreate that in Revit? That would be cool. So it's a, an interesting approach. I think it it was it was quite quite fun to create this tutorial. So that's what we're uh, doing today. Now, before I get into that, uh, I would just like to ask you to like and share this video. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to subscribe. And also, if you're looking for maybe more uh, in-depth content where I take the extra time to explain all of these advanced topics like stairs, which I'm covering in today's tutorial. I actually have a five-hour uh, course on stairs and railings in Revit, and it's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. It's going to be the first link in the description just below the video. There I have uh, multiple different courses ranging from beginner to intermediate as well as advanced courses, uh, so check it out if you're interested. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Okay, so here we are in Revit and let's just start a new project. And for the template file, I'm going to be using the Balkan Arctic template, the metric version. Now, if you're interested in both the metric or imperial version of uh, my template, check out my website. It's going to be the uh, one of the links in the description. It takes you directly to the template where you can get it. Anyways, I'm just going to click OK and now let's get started. Now, I was thinking a lot, what tool should I use for modeling something like this? Should we use stairs or should we have a different approach and to be honest I'm uh, I'm going to be modeling this mostly out of in place components and the reason for that is because uh, this is something uh, this is a an ancient structure and Re Revit doesn't really offer tools for something like that that's like asking which Revit tool you would use to model a pyramid uh, I mean there isn't a tool for a 20 ton stone uh, so uh, that's why I'm going to be using uh, in place uh, modeling I guess that that's my defense why I'm going to be uh, choosing this approach. Anyways, uh, let's get started by going here to the south elevation and then I just want to lower the level 2 down to 0.85 meters, so that's 85 centimeters. And the reason for this is this is going to give me a kind of nice 5 steps for my stairs. Uh, now I'm going to go in level 1 and even though I said this is going to be modeled as an in-place component, I'm going to use the stairs tool in order to create uh, basically the, the the shape because it's going to make it really easy if you use the stair tool to do something like this. Uh, so I'm just going to go with a simple straight run from level 1 to level 2 with the run width of 1.2 meters. Click once, stretch it out, click once again and we're done. Just uh, Let's go to railing and then go with none, click OK, hit finish, perfect. And let's get rid of this ugly sign. Okay, so once we have this in place, uh, now I can just select it, go here to mirror, and then use the, uh, let's use pick access like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, select that stair, go to the move tool, and then move it by 0.8 meters, just like that. Perfect. Okay, so once we have this whole uh, stair uh, created, the next step uh, is going to be uh, to go here to south elevation, just like this, to see what we have. That's what we have. So this is just a simple monolithic stair uh, that we have here. As you can see, this is the office building stair that they used. Uh, this is just a part of the template. But you can use just a regular uh, monolithic stair for that. Uh, anyways, the next step is going to be to model this out as an in-place component. So let's go to component, model in place. And for the category, I'm going to be sticking to stairs as category. Let's call this one stairs one, who cares? Uh, go to extrusion and for the work plane, I'm going to choose pick a plane, click OK and then pick this here face. Next, uh, you can either use pick lines or if it's easier, you can just use regular lines and then just draw it out. I just find this sometimes a bit quicker than using pick lines. But anyways, go to the other side, uh, fix these up. So as you can see, when you use pick lines, you get these gaps, which you later on have to fix up. So it kind of brings in question, is that the most efficient way? Hit the escape key a couple of times, select all of these, go to mirror with the draw access, 
up the center line, pull it down, there we go, perfect. Uh, next, uh, I just want to stretch this out, like this, by the value of 0.8 meters, because that's the value that we have here on top, so just make sure that this matches this. Uh, and then uh, you want to go down by the value of one step. So actually the best way to do that is to select one of the, the steps, the risers, go to the copy tool, and then just, oops, not there, copy, select the top point, and then move it here. Perfect, hit the escape key a couple of times, and then let's just close the whole thing off like that. And then just use trim and extend to finish it there. Hit the escape key a few more times. Okay, uh, I almost missed this, so this should go all the way to the upper level like that. Perfect. Hit finish, and we're done. Uh, so now you can go back into level one, uh, select this thing, and then stretch it out. See, like that. So uh, the whole extrusion should be at 1.2 meters, and then you can hit finish model. Okay, so now when we go into the 3D view, we have something that looks like this, kind of odd. So let's get rid of the stairs themselves. And now we have something like this, which looks uh, a bit nicer. Uh, now let's move to level one and see what we have. So this is what that looks like. So now the next step that you want to take is to go here to architecture and let's create the floor. So this floor should be about uh, 1.2 meters offset from here, just like that. And then let's model it like this. I may have over exaggerated with the size. But yeah, we can, oops. Yeah, we can make this a bit smaller here, extend it there and here a little bit further. Perfect. Hit finish. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so once we have this one stair, uh, we can go to copy, make sure to check multiple, and then go from one corner and then copy it multiple times. I'm just going to do three uh, sets just because it's going to make it a bit easier. Uh, but anyways, once we have that, now we can select this whole thing, go to copy, copy from here, down there, Let's hit the escape key a couple of times, select, oops, select the whole segment of stairs, uh, go to south elevation, and then go to move. Now this is going to allow you to move this up, so make sure to go here to the bottom face, and then move it here uh, to the top face, there we go, that's exactly what we want. And then we want to overlay this over this. Uh, so the easiest way to do something like that is to use perhaps a grid. So just extend a grid like this. Select all of these, hold the control key, move, and then let's move from the center line here and just make sure that everything overlaps correctly. And we can get rid of this grid line if we don't need it anymore. Anyways, we have something that looks, uh, well, fairly decent. Now we can uh, select the whole thing. Let's go into 3D, actually, just to see what that looks like. Yeah, perfect. I really like the way this looks. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is perhaps add another segment. So uh, let's go to South Elevation, go to Copy, and then just copy this from here to there. Perfect. Uh, next, uh, you want to go back to the 3D view, and you want to extend this down. So you can extend it down like that. Or uh, you can, actually, this floor should go down. So let's give it an offset of minus 0.15. Perfect. Or no, should it go a bit? Okay, let's go to south elevation. Sorry about this. So let's just select it and then move it down just to make sure that everything overlaps correctly. Perfect. Okay, anyways. Uh, so you want to select this. As you can see, you can kind of stretch it down and attach it to the floor, which makes editing really easy and quick, just like that. And now when we go to the 3D view, it looks like that. Perfect. Uh, moving on, uh, let's uh, just copy this now upward. So for that, you want to select the whole segment, uh, go to level one, go to copy, and then you just basically copy it like, okay, I messed up. So it's really important to be precise here. So let's go like that. There we go. Select the whole segment, go to South Elevation, uh, go to Move, and then you want to move this center point up here somewhere, and then you can just use the Move tool and try to use this kind of end point and adjust it there. Perfect. Okay, oh, it should go up a little bit, so let's move it up by one step. Perfect. So we have something that looks like this. Uh, uh, moving on, let's go 
back into the 3D view just to see what we have. Now you can extend this all the way to the ground, you don't have to if you don't want. I'm just trying to make something that looks fairly decent for, I, I guess you can say, your rendering purposes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but anyways, after this, if you take a look at the image itself, let's make it smaller. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, we have three levels of stairs and then we have just like one regular level. I guess. So uh, basically I'm going to be recreating that by flipping here to the other side, going to component, model in place. Let's uh, let's categorize it as stairs as well, stairs 12, that's okay. Go to set work plane, go with pick a plane, click OK, and then let's pick this back plane here. Uh, next let's move to the extrusion tool and let's create, uh, oops, I wanted a rectangle. So let's go like that with a rectangle. Move perhaps to the south elevation to see everything better, yeah. And then we can go like this, maybe use a line tool if you want to be precise. Just like that. Here as well, actually it's, ah, let's leave it like that. And then you don't want to go here to the step, or actually you can attach it to the step, then go to move, and then just move it up like that. So it kind of goes one step above that. Hit finish. Go here to the 3D view, okay, so the extrusion should be 1.2 meters, and we're done. Finish model, perfect. And of course, uh, now you can just copy everything uh, upward again, so you can uh, select all of these. Uh, I'm just looking at the image, so uh, select all of these. Uh, go to, let's go to site plan maybe, yeah, uh, go to copy. Go from here up to there, the escape key a couple of times, select all of these, go to south elevation, go to move, and I have no idea what's going on, so let's move it like this. Go to move again, move it here, and then move it up by, I don't know how far, let's try one step, okay, let's try two steps, there we go, okay. And then we can add perhaps one more by going to copy, and then going like that. Now, don't worry if this looks like it's kind of going off to the side a bit too much. Uh, that's okay, because uh, when we uh, create the other side, we actually want to have that extension. Okay, so you can go ahead and continue doing this, or you can stop right here. Let's do one more quick step. So let's uh, site plan, copy, and let's do this one quickly. So I'll go from here to here. Maybe this is going to make it a bit quicker. Select the whole thing, go to south elevation, and then move it up. So you can move it from one to the other. Oops, that's too much. Yeah, so uh, when you're do working fast like this, you're going to make some small uh, mistakes and adjustments, but that's okay. Anyways, let's say we're happy with the way th this turned out. Let's go to the 3D view. Yeah, looks really cool. Anyways, now we want to copy this to the other side, and let me show you something really cool. I can select the whole thing, go to the site plan, for example, and then go to the uh, mirror tool. Let's see where that is. Uh, there we go, mirror tool, and you want to go with the draw axis, you want to go to the corner and then extend it at 45 degrees, just like this, and there we go, it looks like that. Uh, now we have to readjust the floor a little bit, so let's edit the boundary like uh, that at 1.2, perfect, hit finish uh, with that go to the 3D view, there we go. Now we do have to make uh, some adjustments, well we have to make a lot of adjustments, but that's okay, these are fun adjustments. <laughs> so let's go here into edit in place for this one for example, go into edit extrusion, and then basically want to copy this to the other side so you can use mirror with pick access, go like that, as you can see, perfect. And then trim and extend, like this and then like that, and then you hit finish. Okay, we have to extend it a little bit further. Perfect. So we have that little extra step there, hit finish model. Uh, now for these, you have to go again into edit in place, select this one, edit extrusion, and then for this one, for example, you go to trim and extend, you trim it here, and then you get rid of everything else. Oops. Get rid of this one, and then you can actually align it using the align tool to this face here. There we go, uh, hit finish, this one, edit in place, 
edit extrusion and again something like this and let's see will it snap yes it will perfect finished model and then basically you just go like that all the way to the top so for example for these you can just extend them using these little grip points now if they don't snap that's okay uh, let's move it out and then you can use the align tool so you pick this face and then this edge like that same thing here this face this edge perfect and here this one needs manual adjustment as well so it is annoying to have to do things manually but that's okay and then align here oops there we go and then you have to finish that model select this one go to edit select it edit extrusion and then let's get rid of this whole thing trim and extend fix it up and align it here so there we go uh, it, this is a bit of manual work but as you can see with all of that mirroring and copying and everything this was done fairly quickly so we can just uh, finish this off here or I can leave you <laughs> to do that on your own uh, later on but there you go that's how you can create something that looks like this in Revit I, I think it it was quite fun to, to model something like this I think it's a fun challenge to find things like that that are interested uh, interesting in real life and try to recreate them later on in Revit so tell me in the comment section below have you enjoyed this video uh, uh, did you um, try to model it yourself uh, were you searching for this or did you maybe just see the video and were like I want to see how something like that is done. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you're new to Revit, check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I have a beginner to intermediate complete 16-hour course. And also, if you're an intermediate or even an expert level, I have a bunch of courses there for you, as well as on my Patreon, where you can also find my project files, like this file that I have just created. So if you're interested, check that out. Those are going to be the first and the second links in the description. And for the template, that should be the third link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you for sticking towards the end. And, and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.